All right, so sign analysis is a method of determining solutions to an inequality in one variable. We've talked about other methods of doing this before, like uh, um, graphing the line and determining uh, where the function is positive if it's a greater than, you know, if the function is greater than zero, where is it positive and what are the x values that are associated with that. We've also done it by factoring, let's say, a polynomial or a, a line or whatever, and using those factors um, as finding the x-intercepts and then splitting the number line up into sections where we test points to see if the inequality is true or not. That's, that's the second way we could do that. This is the third way, and this sign analysis will carry you into calculus. This will be important in calculus. You need to know how to do this in calculus, so this is the time we need to show you about this, uh, teach you about this. So it involves factoring our expression or function that we're given, listing the factors and charting where the factors are positive and negative relative to the numbers on a number line. That's the, that's the um, crux of this whole uh, concept here. The most important highlighted part is where we see in a chart where the signs, what the signs are for each individual factor. And then as we analyze those signs and do the multiplication or whatever, we see where the function is positive or negative. So I, I will obviously do an example here right away, but that's what sign analysis involves. So the previous two methods, which I did just explain, I'll show you as well on the board. You've already seen this. If we graph, uh, graph the function, so if we wanted to solve for this inequality, we would graph the related function, and then we would determine where the graph is. In this case, I want to know where the graph is less than or equal to zero. So where is the graph below the x-axis? And those x values that are associated with that negative part of the graph, those are the solutions right there. So that's graphing. Um, roots and test points uh, are where we factor the related equation, find out where the intercepts are, negative 1 and 3, and then in visualizing at least on a number line the three sections that this creates. So these are intercepts and then where is the graph positive, where is it negative, and you pick x values in one or more sections to determine whether the equality is true or not. Okay. So again, I've been through this in the lesson. This is just a review for things that we've already done. Look previous videos or uh, ask me about this if you're not understanding those two. So sign analysis, again, a little more detailed here. What we want to do, the process includes moving all terms, if they're not already, to one side of the inequality sign so that you have a zero on the other side. So it's going to be important for us to have a full expression of the um, the, the related equation there, an expression of the polynomial, let's say. Most of them are polynomials for you. And then either we have our inequality less than or equal, or equal to or greater than, and then we have zero on the other side. So that's going to be important. You have to have this. Once you do that, you want to factor the expression. Okay, so on to step two. Let's go ahead and do that now. So step one is already done. Step two, I want to factor this expression. And it's a trinomial. So I'll expect that I should be able to factor this uh, as two binomials. So x should be the first term, and it looks like we have negative 3 and positive 1. And the reason why I would guess that is because negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So that should be that in factored form. Okay, um, now what we want to do is we want to chart or list the factors on a chart and then decide where these factors are positive and negative. Let me show you how to do that. So the chart looks like this. It's kind of an elongated L, like this. And, oh gosh, let me just, okay, now it's moving. So this bottom part of the L here is actually the number line. So I'm going to put little arrows there. I would encourage you to do that as well. And we're going to list the factors in, doesn't matter what order, but we're going to list the factors on the side of this elongated L. And like I say, as we move through math classes, you're going to have polynomials that might have three factors or four or five factors. You might have rational functions where you have factors on the top and factors on the bottom where you have to divide and multiply. All of this can happen with sign analysis. Sign analysis covers all of those complicated uh, expressions as well. So in this case, we have just two factors. Most of the what you're going to deal with is just two factors. So what we do now is we, okay, now we have to, see what we're doing is we're charting 
where the factors are positive and negative, and actually where there's zero as well. So watch this. Am I still frozen? I thought I hit that unfreeze button. Is that better? All right, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'll let you catch up there. <laughs> I don't know what, how, how long that's been frozen. I hit the wrong button, I think, so uh, good now. So elongated L, bottom is the uh, uh, number line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to identify first where these uh, factors are zero. So where does this factor equal zero? For what value of x does this factor equal zero? At x equals three. Okay, when x is three, this factor is zero. So I'm going to put three on my number line over here. And in the row that x minus three is, I'm going to put a zero in the row of this factor and above three, just like that. So this says that this factor is equal to zero when x is three, okay? Let's do the same for the other one. Where is this factor equal to zero at what x value? Very good, negative one. So I'm gonna put negative one here. And what's important is that you have the numbers properly in order, like uh, least to greatest on this number line. It doesn't matter where they are, as long as they're in order relative to each other. So I'm gonna put negative one over here, and I'm gonna put a zero above that in line with this factor. Are we good so far? Okay, so we wanna label the zeros. Now we chart the signs. So what this means, let's go back to the first one. If x is less than three, any number that's less than three, and I insert that number into x here, like let's say it's a zero, because zero is less than three, what is the sign on this factor? It's negative. So all I'm doing is I'm saying, and, and here's, uh, here's zero, right? I'll just put zero here. That's a good test point because it's less than three here. So when zero minus three, that's a negative three that this factor is equal to. So that's a negative here. And it just so happens that every number I pick on this side of um, x equals three is gonna give us a zero, uh, a, a negative value for this factor. Now, if the number was greater than three, like 10, 10 minus three is a positive number. So guess what? We put plus signs in the same row, but on the other side of the zero. Okay? So I'm kind of visualizing where this factor is gonna be positive or negative. And the reason why this is helpful is because we can do it to any number of factors that we have listed here. Uh, and, and then uh, I'll show you what we do at the end. We just simply kind of find out the regions where it's positive or negative. So here, if I choose a number that's less than negative one, like negative 10, well, negative 10 plus one gives me a negative value for this whole expression. So that's negative on this side. And similarly, if I choose zero, zero plus one is a positive one. So positive number. So it's positive for every value on this side. Any, any questions there so far on this? Or uh, you understanding this so far? Okay. Now, it seems like a lot of work like to draw pictures here, draw, but trust me, this is really gonna help you straighten things out. Okay, now we've got all the factors, there's only two, we've got all of them in the chart. Now what we do is we say, okay, this is, we're actually kind of testing the related function, right? So I, I always put like the function here. What is the function value? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, well, there is a split right here at this zero. So at each zero, there's kind of a split in the regions. So I have a split here and I have a split here, you see that? So I'm gonna find out what is the sign when I multiply these two factors in this region. A negative value for this one times a negative value gives me positive. So we see that the function is overall positive here in this, this first section. Now, if we have one factor is a zero, at negative one, I have zero. So you can put a zero there. A negative number times zero is zero. In the middle section, we take, okay, this, this fa top factor is a negative, the bottom factor is a positive. When I multiply a negative times a positive, what do I get? I get a negative. So the function overall is negative in this middle section. And a zero times a positive number would be zero. So we are zero here. And that makes sense, right? The function should, the y value of the function should be zero at an intercept, which these are intercepts. So, 
And then here, positive times positive is positive. All right. So what we're focused on is this line down here. That's the result. That's what we're looking for. And what this tells us is similar to the second method where you have test points, intercepts and test points. This is similar, but you can see um, that where it's positive and negative without using a test point. Okay. So the function is positive when x is less than 1. The function is also positive when x is greater than 3, as you see that here and here. The function is negative between negative 1 and 3. So let's go back to our original question. Where is this function less than or equal to 0? Well, where is this function, the related function here, less than or equal to 0? It's be between negative 1 and positive 3 inclusive. So the solution set here, we just go from this sign analysis chart and we say from negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. And that signifies that's everything between negative 1 and 3 and including negative 1 and 3. Okay? So it's slightly different, um, but, but trust me, this is actually going to go real quick. And when you have five factors in calculus and you're doing this, you're going to want to do this. You're not going to want to do test points and figure out all the intercepts and just, uh, you know, test. You're just going to want to do this chart. And you're just going to go plus, minus, zero, you know, plus, zero, minus, zero, plus. It's going to go real quick. Okay? Should we do one more example? Let's do one more example here. All right, so here's a question uh, from your assignment. It says, use sign analysis to determine the solution to each inequality. So let's do 5a together. And we'll go through all the steps, and we'll sh I'll show you how um, nice and easy this can be. All right, so hopefully you've got that written down. Uh, first step is we've got to get everything over to one side so that we um, have a 0 on the other side. That's going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm going to bring that 18 over to this side. And it's going to be less than or equal to 0. OK? All right. Awesome. It's, it's nice to deal with a positive x squared uh, coefficient here, right? That's always best. If, let's just say, if you had negative x squared is less than or equal to 0, if you wanted to get rid of this negative, do you remember the small rule with inequalities when you multiply or divide by a negative? Does anybody remember what you have to do? There's, there's a, you have to flip the sign, right? So just as an example, if I wanted to do this, if I wanted to divide both sides by negative 1, I would have to flip this sign, OK? So that goes for this, too. If you have a negative x squared and you don't like factoring a negative x squared, which I would agree with, then flip the sign and divide everything by negative 1 to get rid of it. But you just have to remember to flip the sign, OK? All right, so you might have to do that in some questions. All right, so let's factor. Can we factor this? Hopefully. We have a nice, easy method to factoring this. If, you, if it's not easy, what you might have to do is use the quadratic formula. And you might have an irrational, you know, irrational roots, which is not the end of the world. But um, let's see what we can do. So I'm thinking 6 times 3 is 18. And, and a 6 and 3 have a difference of 3. So I think we can make this work, right? So let's go plus 6 and minus 3. That multiplies the negative 18 and adds up to positive 3, doesn't it? All right, so let's do sign analysis. I'll put an x plus 6 over here and an x minus 3 on the side of my little chart. Put my number line down. And I see that I have zeros at, remember that's at negative 6 and positive 3. So let's put those on the number line in the right order. Negative 6 first and positive 3 towards the right. I'll plop zeros down at the appropriate spot. So zeros is where you want to kind of start. It's a good idea to do zeros first. So zeros there and there. Because again, at x equals negative 6, this factor is equal to 0. Everything before negative 6, so less than negative 6, like negative 100, OK? Negative 100 plus 6, that's going to be negative 94. So we're definitely going to have a negative value for everything that's less than negative 6. And a, a number like 100, while well, 100 plus 6 is going to give us a positive value. So most of the time, and I'll, tel I'll tell you this as a shortcut, as if you can remember it, but if this x value in this term, if it's positive, then it's always going to end up to be negatives on the left side of the 0 and positives on the right. 
when you get into the, the, the case where we have six minus x, if this is a negative value in front of it, like a negative, then it's flipped. Uh, and that might be too much for you to remember right now, so I would do test points for these to begin with just to think that through. But anything less than negative, uh, positive three here, let's say, is gonna give us a negative value for this factor. And then anything greater than three is gonna give us a positive value, okay? All right, now the function itself, okay, and again, we don't see f of x anywhere in here, but the related function right here that we're kind of examining, that's the f of x, that's what we're examining, that's what we're interested in. The sign there is going to be, well, multiply negative times negative, we get positive. Oh. Multi multiply zero times a negative, we get zero. Positive times negative is negative. Positive times zero is ah, zero. My computer is starting to shut down on me. Positive times positive is positive. So use sign analysis to figure this out. Well, again, this is the original question. We did one short, small manipulation here to see that I'm looking for x values that make the, the related function negative, you see, less than or equal to zero. So negative or zero. So I would just kind of go from here, go from this second line here and say, yeah, I'm looking for the negatives while well, it's in here. So that is related to the values of negative six all the way up to positive three and including, including them. So inclusive. So solution set equals, funny brackets, the variable is x, so we'll use x in the middle there less than or equal to, less than or equal to, use those signs from negative six to positive three. And that is the proper convention for stating that all the x values that are solutions in this question are greater than negative six or equal to, as this, at the same time as being less than or equal to positive three. And that's how you signify all these in here. All right, good. Hopefully you can do that on your own now. So that's the, that's the kind of the last little part for uh, 9.2. So you've got all three methods now that you can use to uh, solve inequalities in one variable. Good? All right.